doll friends, this is Michael Canadas with the Grovian Doll Museum and Carmel Doll Shop. We are at Miss Paula's house and uh, I have pulled out of her collection some of my favorite uh, felines. She has them all over the, her, her lovely home, but I wanted to share some that you might have missed. So the first I'm going to start with is this little lamp. And this is a little bedside lamp, um, probably made by one of the many Germanic companies. But this is a little fairy lamp. And if you could see, you would put a little votive candle and it would go on the bedside of a lady or a child and it would just create a little night light. And the eyes would glow and uh, they're highly collectible. And I think they're, they're actually um, quite charming. Another little cute um, cat piece, feline piece, is this little candy container. The head comes off, but you can see that it's playing with a uh, basket of uh, yarn, you know, balls, you know, which cats, as those of you who have cats know, they love to pay, play with a ball of, of string. Um, this is a lovely size piece that actually um, would work fantastic in a tableau with French fashion dolls or French bebés. A um, little too big for a, a dollhouse, but I guess it could go in an oversized dollhouse. Just a really charming piece. And I'll turn it around so you can see the back. It's paper mache, and then it's covered with a flannel and painted. And again, probably Germanic. Um, you know, these are made by the thousands, but because of the delicate material, there aren't many that have survived. Next piece I'm going to show you, I think is very interesting. It's again, a tabby type cat, and you can see it has a basket, but the, the basket is actually a pin cushion. So it's a pin cushion that uh, sharpens your needles, and then below is a needle case. And again, this is something that could go beautifully in a tableau for a, a French fashion or a French bebe. Next, I want to share a classic um, tabby cat candy container. And you can see it's a nice size. It's probably from tail to head about 12 inches. And this is made out of uh, what we would call paper mache, but it's actually a, um, not like your paper mache that we worked on when we were kids but it's a, more of a composition. So there would be paper pulp, plaster, sawdust, you name it, every company had their own uh, formula. And it was actually fairly fragile. His head is on nice and tight, so I'm not gonna take it off for you to see, but you can see he's got a beautiful painted face with um, lovely nose details and little teeth and great little uh, glass eyes. And again, this is a good size um, uh, to use as in a tableau with French bebés or German characters, um, but just a really cutie. Now here's another cat that I think is really kind of sweet. Uh, this, this again is the paper mache, but it's unusual because it has a faux fur covering on it. And um, I can't film this in and pull the um, tab at once, but it does make a very nice little kitty meow. And if I pulled this, all the cats in the house would come a, come a running. Next piece I wanna show is a, a wonderful lithograph McLaughlin book of pussycat capers. And again, just beautiful lithography. And I think that these make a collection pop when you have the color. You don't need, necessarily need a lot of them, but it has beautiful um, lithography and then you know charming story inside. So these are really, really fun to collect. Here is another a children's book, and this is Pussies at Play. And um, another piece by um, one of the 19th century's famous um, children's, well, not just children, but it's also postcards and Valentine's 
uh, Raphael Tuck, and his lithography is just out of this world. And you can see the humor in, you know, cats and anapomorphic situations. Uh, I think it's interesting that he's wearing pants and uh, clearly she's a she and she's completely nude except for a uh, bow around her neck. Another one of the pieces that we didn't show you in the tour um, was this um, 19th century ball toss, uh, probably late 19th century, early 20th century. And these really are made out of paper mache as you would know that know it um, from all of our school days. You can almost see the, the newsprint practically in it. And I think that they're very unusual that they even survived because you would th try to throw the ball and hit the kitty's mouth. And you know, most of the time they, they didn't make that. Feline fascination is not just in toys, um, children's literature, it's also in household goods. So here we have a, a, a late 19th century, early 20th century uh, throw pillow with a wonderful uh, design and some embroidery. And it says, don't forget the kitty. And it has some interesting um, symbolism of the playing cards. Uh, so I, we don't know exactly what this means, but um, Clearly, this is a very talented cat that can play the banjo. The next automaton that we have is Kitty Mama, and she rocks her baby in the cradle. Doubt that it's pleasurable for the kitten. Here you can see the Moulin de Camp Key. Here we have a Moulin de Camp Miss Nurse Kitty and um, probably made about 1900 to 1910. And you can see this is a classic Moulin de Camp fur covered animal, which they were very prolific at creating. And she has the paper mache body with the glass eyes. You can see the, they've used the paper mache to do her little kitty nose. And they've actually been very resourceful. They've used the same feet that they used on their monkeys for the uh, feet and the arms. And what I think is very interesting about their cat models is they used the mechanism, the machine noises to simulate a purring sound in a cat. And uh, you will hear that when we operate it. Remember to like, subscribe, and hit that notification button.